So, you want to write a tech book. Well, so I've written five books with strange animals on the cover over the past five years. No idea what those animals actually mean. And even though nobody in my family is a medical professional at all, they've all sort of diagnosed me with this chronic writing disorder. So this is my account. So this is how you feel when you get your first and your second and your third and your fourth and your fifth writing contract. You feel excited, and you should be, because you've sort of validated an idea. There's a publisher who agrees it's a good idea. You're presumably going to make some real money here, right? Because, I mean, we all know tech book writers are rich, and you know you buy Bentleys and pools, and you have multiple houses and residences all over the world, and these sorts of things. Well, maybe not. I think the reality is you got to be a little bit realistic when you think about getting into this tech writing business because it's actually a considerable amount of work. And besides, you're not really in it for the money anyway. You're in it because you really care about this stuff. You want to tell a story about something. You want to educate people. You want to help people be better. And there are going to be a lot of nights where it's 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. You've had your first, second, third, fourth latte, frappuccino, whatever it is that you drink, and you've got to have the intestinal fortitude to stay up and do it again two or three other nights that week. So here's a really key point to keep you going. Think of this book as a startup. Think of it as a business. So you're building a product. You're going to sell this product. Of course, you're going to make some money on this product. But don't think of it as just a project. Think of it as a product. You're going to make money, you're going to make royalties, all that's good. But if you have the mindset of a project as you're writing this book, it's something you're just going to do and you're going to put it on the shelf and that's going to be the end of it. You're not going to make services dollars with selling your valuable time because you're an expert on this thing. Uh, you're really not going to maximize the opportunity. You want to think, how do I be lean about this? How do I do the least amount of work possible in order to get the most feedback from people so that I can actually iterate and improve this thing? And as you do this, you want to try to be a little bit shrewd, a little bit clever. Uh, you might want to try to get on the front page of Hacker News or get a slash dot review or generally be in a really visible place, Reddit, something like that. And that'll take a little bit of work, but I think you can do it. You're clever. When you finally get that feedback that you're looking for, you need to be attentive to it. It'll offend you. It'll upset you. It will hurt your feelings. But if you actually take it into account, take it to heart, take it on the chin, it's going to make your product better. When you're working on a book, you always want to be as innovative as possible. Don't just write another rip-off, knock-off of whatever the latest other publisher happened to write. Think, think something that's pretty far outside the lines. Step on a few toes from time to time, but in the process of stepping on toes, be careful because, you know, history has a little way of repeating itself and life's all about relationships. You, you don't want to sacrifice those relationships just at the cost of innovation. So as you're writing this book, you want to be everywhere you can. You want to be on LinkedIn. You want to be Google Plus so you get the good Google SEO into account. You want to have a Facebook page. You want to have Twitter. You want to have it all so that you leave these little breadcrumbs with these little additive effects all over the place. But never sacrifice your authenticity because if you do, you will be found out. If, if you're not really being true to your cause, you're not really being who you are, you really don't know what you're talking about, it won't take long until you're found out. And besides, you're, you're an entertaining person. You tell stories all the time. You, you have this passion. You have it in you. You just have to find a way to channel that and, and sort of send a positive message in a way that people are having fun because people like being entertained. That, that's a really key point that I've learned. Even though it might be a tech book, people really like being entertained and having fun. And if you can tell a good story, have a little bit of fun, you have a quality product, everybody will be like that guy who was so enthusiastic, only it'll be about something that matters. You don't want to write a book that's going to have a short shelf life. Don't write a book that's going to be obsolete six months from now because someone changed their API again or you didn't think through some technology decision. And perhaps the most important thing I could tell you is that persistence pays off eventually. You want to be committed. You want to have a personal brand of trust with your publisher, with your editor, with your readers. That, that's so key. You want to be a person who does what they say they will, when they say they will, every time, nonstop. And so kind of a recap here. You may not have the tech skills to write a book. You may not have the writing skills to write a book. But you can write a book. If you want to write a book, you can develop those skills. Um, moonlighting is a skill in and of itself. And so I hope you'll think about this. I hope you write a book. And I don't always say thank you, but when I do, you're welcome.